Hi, I'm Adam Kolb, and you're at BeachCast. Today, we're going to talk about authentication in Laravel using the Artisan Auth command. So stick around, and we'll get right on that. Welcome back. If you want to grow as a developer and make better web applications, start now by subscribing to BeachCast and clicking the bell so you won't miss a thing. And if you found this video helpful, please leave a comment about it. Afterwards, go to the website and subscribe to my newsletter so you'll be updated each month with what I'm doing right here at BeachCast. And please remember to like the video by clicking the thumbs up button. Thank you. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. So again, what I said uh, earlier is that we're going to be adding authentication to a Laravel application. Uh, you'll remember that we got the application up and working. Now, uh, one thing that I didn't cover in the previous video, and I'm not gonna cover it in this video, is how to get the development environment up and working in PHP Storm. I've recorded a video in the past on Zend Expressive and getting it up and working in a development environment using PHP Storm. So I recommend you go back and check that out. I'll link to that right up here. It's exactly the same process as what I'm using for this Laravel application. So you, you can set it up to uh, incorporate your Docker and your Docker Compose setup. You can connect to the database and get all that done from within PHP Storm. Again, look at that video on how I set this up. So today though, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the Laravel application that we got up and running in the previous episode and we're going to add authentication to it. So to do that, to start off with, the first thing I need to do is, uh, again, as in the previous video, I've got the Docker container up and working. If I go to my services tab in PHP Storm, we can see that I do in fact have the, uh, the, the DB uh, container. We also have the web container. Those are both up and working, ready to go. Now the, I'm going to issue a command in the terminal to then uh, bring up a bash shell into the in, into the container so that way any commands that I'm issuing are done within the container. And to do that, I'm going to need this item, which is the container names, and that is slash Laravel hyphen example underscore web underscore one. So again, I'm going to use that name um, and then I'm going to issue the command to then uh, use get a bash shell within the container. And to do that, I'm gonna issue the command docker exec, uh, and then I'm gonna give it the container name, Laravel hyphen example underscore web underscore one, and then I'm gonna send a command into it of slash bin slash bash, and that is going to give me a bash shell within the container. So I'm gonna go ahead and execute that. Now you'll notice that uh, now we are given, uh, it, it's, first of all, it's dumping, dumping us into the default directory, which was, uh, which was uh, set as the default directory in our, uh, in our Docker files. And it also is bringing us to a hash sign instead of a dollar sign. And that's because inside the Docker container, we are working as root. So, so we're as root and we're in the Docker container. If I uh, list all the files there, sure enough, it's the same files that we're seeing in our local environment uh, from from the new Laravel application. And anything that I do inside of this container is essentially using that app. So if I issue the command PHP Artisan, for instance, you can see that it did execute the PHP Artisan command. And it by default, PHP Artisan acts the same as PHP Artisan list. And by listing all the available commands that are that's there with Artisan. Uh, and we're going to be using Artisan today to create our auth. Now, looking at that, now that we're in in the uh, in the container, we're going to issue the command to make auth. So we're going to we're going to issue the command PHP Artisan make auth. And that was one of the commands that were available. If I had scrolled up here, 
we would see that in the make section, there's a lot of things that you can make. Make auth is the first one, and that creates the scaffold, basic login, registration, views, and routes. Give, it builds everything that we need to get a good start with an authentic authentication system. So I'm gonna go ahead and issue that command, and it tells me that authentication scaffolding generated successfully. So now we've got the basics there. Going over to our application, we refresh now, we can then see that we do have a login and registration here ready for us to use. And we can even click those, click the login, it goes to the login page. If we click the register, it goes to a register page. Um, now those would not work right now. The, sure, the scaffolds work, the templates are there, they're, you know, so that way we can see the forms. However, these forms are not functional right now because we've not done the migrations to actually uh, execute against the database and create the tables that are needed for the login and registration. So that's what we're gonna do next. The very next thing is we're gonna go in and do that. Now, before we issue that command though to Artisan to tell it to run the migrations, we need to first uh, update our environmental variables to know how to connect to the database. So let's go in and do that. So I'm going to bring this down actually. Let me leave it. All right, so we're gonna open up the environmental, our .env file. And we notice that here, uh, all of our database specific information. Now, currently this will not work. 127.0.0.1 uh, .0 would not work because of course it's, remember this is going to be the environmental variables in the web server, but in this case, we've created a database server or a database container rather separate from the web container. And we've given it aliases. If we look inside of our, inside of our Docker compose, we can see that there is a web server and a DB server. And those are the aliases for each of those servers. So the one localhost will not work. 127.0.0.1 would not work. However, if we put DB in there, if I type it right, we put DB in there, the DB alias will work in the application to connect from our web server to our database server. Now, in addition to that, we also need to put the database name, the username, and the password. Now, those were also available in our composer, uh, in our in our Docker Compose YML. First off, we have the database name, which is DB name. We kept I kept it nice and generic for these videos. So the database is DB name, and then we want the username, which is DB user. Again, very generic for these videos. You would not want to keep these names for your for your uh, production or anything like that. Maybe for a development environment. Um, and then, of course, we want our password. Uh, again, a, a password that you do not want to use on your applications. I'm using it for the sake of these videos uh, for ease. But you you wouldn't want to use those in, on an ongoing basis. Okay, so now we've now we've uh, finished out the environmental variables for our database. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the Docker Compose and close the .env file. Our database stuff is now set up. So going back to the terminal, I can now issue the command to tell uh, Artisan to run our migrations against our database. Now, if we look at our database, I've already got the database uh, connected up here. We can see that we've got the database is DB name, and I've got some default tables here uh, that I'd used to create in the in the expressive videos, you know, earlier on. And now uh, you can go check that out to see how I created that database and everything. But in this case, I just wanted to open it up so you can see that uh, that the database is in fact there. We're connecting to it. Back to the terminal. If I issue the command, um, first of all, let me clear so we start fresh. If I issue the command PHP artisan migrate. What this will do is Artisan will, will take the migrations that were created by the uh, by the create auth uh, command. Now to to look at those, what we can do is we can open, we can expand out the database directory. Okay, expand out the database directory. Look in the migrations, and we see that there are two migrations here. There's the the migrations to create users table, and there's the migrations to create password reset tables. Okay, so those are the migrations that are going to be run as this command is executed. So we're going to go ahead and click that. And we see that it did, in fact, uh, do it successfully. 
it created the users table, it created the passwords resets table. So now our database is, is set. If we look inside of our database, if we refresh that, now that the database uh, panel has refreshed in PHP Storm, we can see that we do have a migrations table, we have a password resets table, and a users table. Those three tables were just created by running the PHP Artisan Migrate. And so now we've got those tables there. However, they're empty, right? There's no users created so far. Um, in order to test this, what we can do is we can go over to our application. Okay, so now we're gonna register, we're gonna create a new user. So I click register and we're gonna go ahead and create test user and we're gonna make test at beachcast.com. And we're going to take the, uh, we're going to take the suggested strong password just to save time, click register. So we're click, we just registered the user. So now the user has been created and it, the, the Laravel auth automatically logs in the user as well. I'm going to go ahead and lock out, log out this user. Cause now I want to test the login as well and as, as a register. So I'm going to click that and we're going to do test at beachcast.com and log in and the application should log us in and it does. And now we're back on the dashboard. So the auth is now working. We've got it up and running and we're all set to go. So that's all I have for you. Uh, today we've created the Laravel auth using the artisan command make auth and now it's all set, set and running. So please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. I really appreciate it and um, I look forward to seeing you all in the future. Thank you.